My name's Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com, and today I'm gonna to show you how I help my friend organize his kid's playroom by building a giant toy box. If you have kids, you know how quickly toys can pile up and completely make a mess of your home. Having a place for them and keeping them organized is a huge part of keeping your sanity. So today I'm gonna to show you how I built this toy box utilizing the new lineup of Craftsman V20 tools. Craftsman is the official sponsor of this video, so thank you to Craftsman for making this video possible. And if you'd like to check out their complete lineup of V20 tools, I'll place a link in the description down below that you can check out. So without further ado, let's dive into the project. As with most projects, this project started with a design that I put together in SketchUp. My friend sent me some measurements and roughly what he was looking for, so I based the design on his ideas. This toy box is huge. It's 90 inches long by 42 inches tall, and serves a multitude of functions. Obviously, it holds a lot of toys, but it also acts as an entertainment center for gaming systems, a DVD player, and other electronics. If you'd like to follow along with this project step-by-step step and make your own version of this toy box, there are free downloadable plans for it on my website that you can find at the link in the description down below. While you're there, you might want to check out some of the other links to some of the other free project plans I have as well. To get started with this project, first I had to create a template for the uprights of this toy box. This project is basically the same shape repeated over and over, so creating a template that I could use to make accurate, repeatable shapes was important. I use a piece of MDF to measure and lay out the shape I wanted, and then cut the shape out using the Craftsman V20 jigsaw. Using a straight edge with the jigsaw as a guide allowed me to keep the lines nice and straight and clean. From there, I took a piece of rough cut three quarter paint grade plywood and roughly cut a similar shape with the jigsaw. And then using a flush trim router bit on my Craftsman router, I followed the template to create one finished panel for the box. Once I had the one piece sorted out, I knew that I could just repeat this process six more times. Once I had all six of the uprights cut out, then I ripped a piece of plywood to serve as the top and the bottom. And from there, it was all about dados. A lot of dados. I mean a lot of dados. I chose to use the dados because it gives a lot of strength to the build because each piece interlocks and slides into the other pieces, but it's a lot of extra work to do this. So you wouldn't necessarily have to do this if you didn't want to, but it does add a little extra strength. And since kids will be climbing on it, playing on it, playing around it. And when it comes to kids stuff, I feel like it's never a bad thing to overbuild something. If I were to do this again though, I probably would use half inch plywood instead of three quarter inch plywood, because by the time I got this thing all assembled and put together, it was really heavy. Once I had all the pieces cut and roughly mocked up, I took it apart little by little, glued everything up, and then shot it together with the 16 gauge Craftsman V20 brad nailer. This is actually my first cordless brad nailer, so it was kind of nice to not have to wrestle with the air hose. Once I finally had the whole carcass put together, I could put the front face frames on. The design is laid out so that each piece can be mitered at 45 degrees to make it easy and repeatable on the table saw. Again, I glued and fastened these in place with brad nails. Once that was finished, I added some iron-on edge banding to cover up the exposed edges of the plywood. This helps clean up the edges and makes it easy for the paint to look uniform without having to add a bunch of coats. Then I could patch the brad holes with some wood filler and prep it for paint. I sprayed several coats of wood sealing primer with my paint sprayer before spraying a couple coats of exterior semi-gloss white to finish it off. I chose exterior because I figured it'd be a little more durable than interior paint. 
I also added some adjustable leveling feet to the bottom of the toy box by gluing some two inch wood blocks in the corners, adding a threaded insert, and then use my angle grinder to slice a line in the end of a carriage bolt. This allows you to use a flathead screwdriver to raise or lower the toy box to make it level in the room. I also added a thin piece of quarter inch plywood on the back to finish off the piece, and that was pretty much it for this project. I'm really happy with the way this toy box came out. It's a massive piece of furniture, but something tells me it's still not gonna be big enough for all the toys. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. And again, if you'd like more detailed measurements and step-by-step -step instructions on how to build your own, be sure to download the free plans on my website at the link in the description down below. Once again, I wanna say thank you to Craftsman for sponsoring this project and providing the V20 lineup of tools I used in this video. The links to all the tools and materials I used in this project are down below. Thank you guys for watching, and if it's your first time visiting the channel, please hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of the new content that I put out. And as always, I encourage you to leave me a comment down below, let me know what you thought of the project, and what type of project you'd like to see me tackle next. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.